Hello and welcome to the Arsenic Show, Season 5. Um, I wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking about what's happened up to this point in the previous season and what we're doing in Season 5. Uh, we took a, we usually take about a month off between the different seasons. In Season 4, we didn't have an intro between the seasons. Uh, we're going to try to make that a more consistent thing. Really, it came down to logistics and trying to get everybody coordinated, and we just kind of dropped the ball in Season 4. But we're going to try to make that a uh, more regular thing. We've actually solved some of our onboarding problems, getting people booked. And so that probably should not be an issue going forward. So uh, you should see one of these at the beginning of every season going forward. Um, I wanted to spend a little bit of time before the season to talk about something that I've been thinking about, which is uh, individualism. And individualism can be great. It's one of those things that I think is a, is a wonderful quality, uh, rugged individualism understanding what people's um, ability to manage themselves without anybody helping them. So if I send you to go do something, you'll be able to do it because you are self-sufficient, you're self-starter, you can do this thing. Uh, it also means stoicism in the face of something bad happens. Like I'm able to uh, manage my own stress. I don't have to reach outward to get that stuff done. Uh, if there's something bad happens, I'll be able to manage that. So that level of self-reliance, I think, is a fantastic trait. It's really, really valuable to all kinds of things in your life, and I don't want to discourage that. I think that's really, really important. But there's a type of individualism, especially amongst a lot of men, unfortunately, that makes them a little bit more standoffish and difficult to be around. Um, and it's not just difficulty to be around in the sense that they are you know, hard to talk to. It's just that they prefer to be by themselves. And I think this is a bit of a problem. And we probably as a society probably need to spend a little bit more time thinking about this in terms of getting people to be friends with one another. I think friendship is just so underrated. Uh, it's one of those things I spend a lot of time thinking about is how do we encourage people to become friends with one another and uh, modern day, because right now there's what what do you have? What sort of incentives do you have to be friends with people when you've got social media? You could just be typing stuff online all day. But I mean, really like friends where you actually see them, you see them at the bar, let's say, or you you go play pool at my house or something. It, there's some reason to hang out. Uh, maybe it's a sports thing you, you share or you both enjoy watching sports together, going to the ball game or whatever. Um, so the first thing I thought that was kind of important to talk about was um, in depression, friendship and depression is really, really critical. I remember when I was going through my divorce, uh, uh, my friend, uh, JD Cameron, who has since passed, uh, he would call me every single day, not miss one day for an entire month. He'd call me every single day. Um, usually around the same time, just, just checking in brother, like, how are you doing? And, uh, I really, really appreciated that. And I don't know how much of a difference it really made, but it stood out in my mind as being one of those very classy, very honest, friendly things that he had done for, for no benefit. There was no real reason for him to do that other than to maintain and, and grow a, a, a friendship between the two of us. I think that if, if you're in a position where you've just gone through something bad and then you try to make friends, that is going to be really rough. So friendship is sort of future-proofing against that that situation in which you really need somebody who isn't a fair weather friend who is going to be by your side and call you up. You know, he was living in an LA at the time. If it, if it hadn't have been for that, I'm sure he would have been over at my house every night. Uh, just kind of person he is or was. So um, then there's sort of the, the lack of love. And I don't necessarily mean in the romantic sense. I mean, there is sort of this brotherly love or, you know, kinship love where I, I probably have dozens of people I could say that I love. Um, I know that they would be there for me, and I know that I would be there for them. And if you're not allowing yourself to have that sort of deep friendship with people, you're really missing out on some a connectivity, a connectivity in a way that allows you to be a more holistic person, um, where people are relying on you and you're relying on them. And so I, I think that's that's something that's um, a little bit more nuanced, and but I think equally important. Um, then there's the kind of the tactical stuff, like moving a couch. If you don't have friends, moving a couch with two people is pretty easy. 
moving it with one person is next to impossible. It's very, very difficult if you've ever tried to do it. Uh, and I recently had to move some furniture by myself uh, for some various reasons. And it was really, really tough. I would have much preferred to have one of my friends over at the time. Um, should have probably made, picked up the phone. But that's the kind of thing where if you have a friend around, you can say, hey, I, I'm moving. Can you help put a bunch of stuff in the car for me? Or, you know, I, I'm trying to frame this thing up and I just need some some extra hands to hold up the thing while I'm screwing something in. I mean, friends are really, really valuable for all kinds of reasons. Um, that's why you have crews of people going and building houses. You don't just have one person doing it typically. Um, another example is getting a job. If you, I, I can't tell you how many times people have asked me, how do I get into X, Y, Z profession or how do I advance my career? I, I hate this thing. I want to get into a new job. Um, well, the very first thing you need to do is start talking to your friends and your friend group who are ideally already kind of doing that job so they can kind of help you into the process or into that company. Um, but at minimum, just having people to talk to like, well, what do you think of my resume? Is this good? You know, sh how should I present myself uh, war game? Like, well, what if they ask this during the interview? Um, or, Hey, do you know anybody who's doing this particular type of job? Or do you know any job openings that network effect? If you don't have a group of friends, that makes it so much more difficult to get your job, the next job. I don't even remember the last time I've shown somebody my resume other than uh, basically for due diligence reasons, not because I was trying to get a job. And the only reason that's possible is because I had a, a large group of friends who already knew who I was before I walked in the door. And so that, that is a big thing that you just don't get for free. Um, ideas are often very terrible. And if you don't have friends who can bounce those terrible ideas off of and give you honest feedback, and I don't, I don't mean fair weather friends who will say, oh, your ideas are always so amazing. I mean, no, your ideas suck or that idea sucks. <laughs> you should probably go back to the drawing board. And I think that the more opportunities you have to be confronted by real friends who will give you real good advice, not, not torturous advice, not hurting you, not saying, oh, you could never do that. We're more like, mm, I don't know, man, that doesn't make sense. Or the market doesn't seem like that would work out. Or, you know, I don't think she's going to say yes. I've, I've talked to her before. I don't think she's into you, you know, <laughs> like, like don't put your heart on your sleeve on this one. Um, there's all kinds of bad ideas out there and having good friends to bounce those things off of is absolutely critical. Um, this is another one that I like to talk about quite a bit actually is health. I think that, uh, the average married person lives about two years longer than the average single male um, in particular. And I think the reason is, I, I'm speculating here, but I think it probably is, imagine you're a single person and you don't really get out very much because you're getting a little bit older and, and uh, you know, something's growing on you or, you know, you're starting to act a little weird because there's something physically wrong with you. And if you don't have somebody who just knows you intimately and knows you on a day-to-day -day basis, they're not going to notice a shift in your personality or a shift in how you're walking or a shift in how you're holding yourself because there's something that's in pain. Um, and it, it's very easy to kind of ignore it and kind of say, no, that's nothing. Or if you see someone only once in a great while, they'll go like, oh, like maybe that is kind of how they walk because they haven't seen you often enough to see that quick decline but I think if there's somebody who's in your life and someone who's around you and really cares for you and you see them on a regular cadence, you're going to, this person's going to notice that there's something wrong and they're going to alert you to it and say, you should go to the doctor, man. <laughs> there's something seriously wrong here. Go, right? Uh, pick, pick up, uh, pick up your car keys. Let's go. Um, and I think that I've seen a lot of my friends kind of balk a little bit at that fact like oh i'm fine or whatever it's like no you are not fine you need to go um and having that friend group um or loved one who can sort of shepherd you through the process and kind of force you or maybe even force you to go to the doctor um with severe consequences like i'm not cooking for you or <laughs> or um you know i'm i'm gonna hold you to some terrible bet or something if you don't do it you know whatever um this all comes down to something you hear a lot in like the military community, uh, which is uh, two is one and one is none or safety first where you have a, a swim buddy or something like that. Having somebody who's got your back, you get in a, you go up and like climb some rocks or something. If you don't have somebody on belay holding you up, or if you're swimming through a kelp bed and you get stuck and you don't have a buddy who can cut you free, you're going to die. And 
there's, I think there's a lot of circumstances where people just go and they put themselves in kind of perilous situations and they don't have a friend sitting there watching their back. And it doesn't have to be in a wartime situation. It could just be normal day-to-day consequences of, hey, did where did I set that thing? If you didn't have somebody watching you and saying, hey, I think you might have set it over on that table over there. I was like, oh, thank you. You know, <laughs> I would have spent hours looking for that thing. Um, you, you miss a lot. There's a lot uh, that could be better about your life. So as a recommendation, I'd say find a tribe. You know, find somebody who... Uh, agrees with you enough that you can have good conversations and disagrees with you enough so you can have fun arguments. Um, I don't think you should have somebody around you who thinks exactly like you. Ideally, they should be, you know, as good or better than you at a bunch of things so you can learn things from each other. Um, ideally, complementary skills and and just enjoy each other's company um, as much as you possibly can. Um, I don't think it should look and act exactly like you though. Um, mostly because you just won't grow and you should grow with your friends just like anybody else. Um, any other situation, you should always try to push yourself. Um, I recommend sharing dumb memes and and dumb jokes. Um, got to keep your friends laughing and vice versa because it keeps you lighthearted. If you know, you see a little chat button on your phone and you know, it's your friend and you know, every time something comes there, it's always funny or you send them a message and you know, they're always going to laugh. Uh, it helps um, focus your friendship in an interesting way and gets you having a common language and a common set of uh, jokes that you can have over the long term. Like I remember that one thing that happened one time. It, it helps a lot. Um, check in on them and then ultimately uh, they will do the same. Just ask, but ask them, like, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Um, like what's going on with that thing? I know you went to the hospital like six months ago. What, whatever happened with that? Are you okay? You know, just check up on them. And, and ideally they'll start doing the same with you and it'll become reciprocal. And that'll be one of those kind of, and I wouldn't call it daily check-ins, but maybe weekly or maybe monthly. It's just like, Hey, how are things going? You know, how's that thing? You were kind of walking weird, you know, you get that fixed or what's going on or, or you haven't gotten that fixed. Well, it's getting worse. Okay. Well, let's go to the doctor or whatever. Um, help them. Um, if you identify a thing that you can help them with, go and help them find, find a way to help your friends. Um, and let them ask favors of you. Um, you should be going out of your way to figure out little things you can be doing for your friends because ultimately that is how you grow that bond between one another. And you might say, well, I don't really want to be in a situation where people owe me, <clears throat> but there's been a lot of studies that say if you give somebody, um, something that they will actually feel like they actually owe you uh, and they will become tighter with you despite the fact that you are now uh, the one out of some work or out of some money or whatever. uh, They will feel ingratiated beyond where you might expect them to. And similarly, you should actually feel the the need and uh, desire to ask them of the same because you will feel more ingratiated to them and reciprocally, and this is where the other interesting research comes into play, they will feel more ingratiated to you because they've helped you out. Um, one of the fun things to do is if uh, if you haven't talked to someone for a while, ask them for something, just like a little minor whatever, a little tiny favor, and they will suddenly have much more positive feelings about you. Um, doesn't You shouldn't ask only things of people because then they'll feel like you're a leech. But just, you know, if, if it's been a kind of a neutral conversation up to that point, you're like, hey, can, you, can I ask you a favor? And It'd be a minor thing, but hey, would you mind looking at this thing I wrote? I would just love to get your feedback on it or you know, something minor. They will feel a lot more uh, engaged with you. So to me, this is not a minor thing. Um, it's something I think about a lot uh, with my friends and how I treat people. Um, and so if it does mean that you live a couple of years longer or that you don't die in a kelp bed if you're into extreme sports or something, jumping off, you know, base jumping and not having somebody check your your parachute for you or whatever we're talking about. Um, you should probably treat this like your life depends on it. And so with that, um, I welcome you to season five. <laughs>